Does it make sense to use the monochrome film with the Instax Mini Elite Play? Or should you convert digitally to black and white and then print on the color film? Both of those questions and more will be answered in this video. Time is money, so let's jump straight into the conclusion. Here is a picture printed on the color film, and here is a picture printed on the monochrome film. The difference is not huge, and I think most people will be fine with the black and white prints on the color film, which is this one. But if you are someone who has shot real black and white film, you'll probably appreciate the bump in quality from the monochrome film. If this is all you came here for, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video. For everyone else, welcome. I'm Matej, on this channel I share tips on how to use the Instax cameras. I already have more than 10 videos posted, so if you are new here, please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any future content. First I'll talk about the differences between the two films, then I'll explain how I printed the pictures, and finally I'll look at the quality of the resulting prints. Instax has been on the market for 20 years, but the monochrome film didn't come out until 2016, and even today the monochrome film is not available in the square format which I think is quite crazy. I mean, come on Fuji, how hard could it be? You're already making it in the wide format, just cut a little bit smaller and you'll have the square format. The monochrome film is generally more expensive. In the United States right now, the monochrome film is about 95 cents a piece. The color film is uh, cheaper at about uh, 64 cents a piece. Uh, I think a lot of the price difference comes from the fact that monochrome is only sold in packs of 10 and the color film is usually sold in bigger packs. I think this was a, a pack of 60. Both of those films could be quite a bit more expensive in other countries. If you want black and white prints from the analog cameras like the Instax Mini 8, the Neo 90 or any of the Lomo cameras, you have no choice. You have to use the monochrome film. And it's a quite easy experience. You just load it in and off you go. Black and white prints come out. But with the Leapley, which is essentially an Instax printer fused to a little digital camera, you have an option to convert the digital file to black and white and then print it on the color film. This plan was appealing to me for two reasons. First, the color film is cheaper, more money for chocolate. And second, I don't have to switch films between color and black and white. The problem is that if you load the monochrome film, the next 10 pictures are gonna be black and white, even if it doesn't suit your subject. For my test, I chose two examples of the most common shots that I print on my Instax. So one portrait and one landscape. Both of those pictures were taken with my uh, iPhone uh, XS. Uh, and I chose vertical pictures so they're easy to compare in the video side by side. So let's start with the portrait. This picture was taken on the train using the portrait mode. I already had the color film in the lead play, so I started with the color prints. So first I printed the picture in color. Here's the color one. Then I did a simple black and white conversion in the iPhone camera app. And I got this. Third, I did a more dramatic uh, black and white conversion called Ansel in the Camera uh, Plus app. It's right there. And the last, I did the silver tone conversion in the iPhone Camera app. It's right there. And then I printed the same digital files on the monochrome film. Here are some things that I've noticed. The black and white prints printed on the color film show a slight color cast on the face that does not look very pleasing. There's a slight greenish tint on the forehand right here. It is not super obvious, but if you have experience with black and white film photography, you will be able to pick it up. Another thing I noticed is that the black and white conversion on the color film have higher contrast than I would like. So if you are planning to do portraits this way, I suggest you experiment with some low contrast digital conversions. The portraits printed on the monochrome film, which is the bottom row right here, have much more detail in the highlights. But I do have to mention that the monochrome film is not truly black and white. To my eyes, it does have a slight cool tint. If you have the prints by themselves, it is not very obvious. But if you put the prints next to the monochrome film box, you can see that the prints are not truly neutral gray. The prints from the color file and prints from the simple black and white conversion look very similar. But I do think it makes sense to look at the file in black and white digitally first before you spend the dollar to make a print. The other two black and white conversions are too contrasty for the portraits in my opinion. It might work well for a fashion shot, so I suggest you experiment. Okay, let's look at the landscape shot. I did the same conversion as for the portrait, but I substituted the silver tone conversion for a CPLA conversion called Contessa. It's also in the Camera Plus app. Similar story here. The monochrome film retains much more detail in the highlights, which is clearly visible in the simple but black and white conversion. One thing that I noticed is that the monochrome prints from the color file 
looks a little bit different than the print from the black and white conversion. So difference between these two. There are more details in the clouds in the print from the color file. This tells me that the monofilm does not react the same way to every color. The Ansel conversion looks great in the digital file, but it seems that the Leaplay can't handle image discontrasty on the Instax film. The clouds are losing a lot of detail here. This super high contrast might work well in some urban scenes, but be warned that if you include clouds, it will likely look like white blobs. The sepia-like print looks quite good, and I think it shows the versatility of the color film can be more important than getting the best possible image quality. If you do want to stick with the monochrome film, one good strategy is to put pictures you want to print on monochrome film in a folder, and then once you have 10 pictures in that folder, load a pack of monochrome film in the camera and print all 10 in a batch. So what do you think? Please write in the comments if the monochrome film is worth the price premium to you. I personally prefer the monochrome film for black and white prints, but I wouldn't hesitate to use the color film for black and white print here now and there if I'm just roaming around. It still looks quite good. If you found this content useful, please gently press the subscribe button for future Instax content. I'll see you in the next video.